Good morning, everyone, and welcome to How Foundations Love Your Brain, Brain Health Month. I am Hillary Loftus, the Healthcare and Concussed Student Athlete Program Director. We have with us Brigadier General Jim Bowerly. And thank you for your service, um, Brigadier General. We will explore the connection um, between student athletes and the vet and military and the veterans brain health care during our conversation. I served in the 25th Infantry Division in Vietnam as an engineer platoon leader, uh, and then uh, the 22nd Support Command during Desert Shield, Desert Storm, uh, in which was a, a, a commanded by a three-star general. I worked directly for him who worked directly for General Norman Schwarzkopf, uh, the CINCOM commander during Desert Shield, Desert Storm. And, and yes, I did the emergency restoration for the country of Kuwait to mm. include the International Airport uh, and several other key things. But that's not our, our, our intent. Uh, mm. Let's talk about HBOT mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, I, I know that... and things mm -hmm. along those lines. Thank you. I know that Hal Foundation's veteran coordinator, Gabriella Ryan, really wanted to be here today to interview you, but she's registering for physician assistant um, classes at the moment. So um, yeah, I have the um, privilege to be here talking to you as well. So um, let's discuss your experience as a Brigadier General in relation to how you first heard about and became interested in medical grade hyperbaric oxygen therapy, HBOT, because not everybody knows about it. Absolutely. Uh, I retired in 2000 and uh, got heavily involved with the Military Veterans Coalition of Indiana that you described. And uh, on we meet once a month on the first Friday. And uh, the, the president of the organization uh, had a speaker come in. Uh, and no idea who this fellow was or anything. He was another fellow Hoosier. His name was Rick Baum. He came in and uh, he talked to us about hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And uh, his son had committed suicide. He was a Marine mm. and committed suicide because he had traumatic brain injury, yeah. post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, TBI. And uh, he was saying that uh, he didn't know about it, didn't know about HBOT and it's mm. it, the science and things that it provides uh, for people with brain injury. And so he explained that to us. And I thought, wow, this is, this is a really an, a interesting information. This was on a Friday. Then on Saturday, the very next evening, uh, I was ushering at my Catholic church in Carmel where I live and a family comes in and as an usher, we hand out the mass aids uh, as they walk in the door before they go sit in the pews before church starts. And uh, this couple, uh, they were all, you know, probably in their 60s, they they were kind of sobbing and you could tell that the wife had been crying uh, quite a bit, mm -hmm. ice puffy, red and things. And I handed them and welcomed them and they walked in. And uh, I've been in that, that Catholic parish for a long, long time. And I knew our pastor who happened to be having that mask. So I asked him uh, and, and commented that, you know, this couple was, uh, seemed really down. Uh, what was going on? He says, well, their son had committed suicide earlier in the week. And the funeral uh, was mm -hmm. just a couple of days ago here at church. So they were, you know, they were still going through the grieving portion of, of that losing their son who had TBI, PTSD, and that. And I says, wow, 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 this is incredible. So from that, uh, I was hooked. I had starting to do research all over the place, everything I could find out about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, how it worked, uh, where you could go to get it, where you can get it in Indiana. And uh, through my through my uh, research, if you will, I found a place here in Carmel where I live that was offering it. And I called them up and talked to them, went and visited them, saw their facilities. And as Lisa pointed out, the person, one of the people who owned the place mentioned Josh Spidell and Lisa Spidell. Okay. And uh, 
to kind of back up my organization, as you mentioned, we do advocacy for those serving, those who have served, served in their families. So this was one of our priorities to get something passed uh, in the General Assembly because for a, probably the previous year, I had made hundreds of phone calls uh, here in Indiana and around the United States trying to find some money that could be used to treat veterans mm -hmm. because there are lots and lots of veterans who need treatment. And as Lisa would tell you, if it weren't for donations, mm -hmm. uh, Josh would have never gotten all the treatment that he received because the Spidells wouldn't have been able to afford it. Well, we have, yeah. we have hundreds of veterans here in Indiana and thousands nationwide that are in that same condition that have maybe not as severe as Josh, but they have traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after failing to get money, I said, well, let's see if we can get the state to research this, to get money so that we can prove to the federal government that, that hyperbaric oxygen therapy works for brain injury. And that, that work, if that works, then it'll be covered by insurance. And then moms and dads like the Spidells, when they have their children, or if we have veterans uh, who have concussions or other traumatic brain injuries or suffer from post-traumatic stress, their insurance will cover the treatment uh, and it will make it. So we worked on that from uh, 2015 and finally in 2017, uh, we went before the Indiana General Assembly uh, with a bill uh, to to do that. And uh, the bill was heard in the Military and Veterans Affairs in the Senate. I had contact Lisa uh, and a number of other veterans uh, and, and uh, another mother whose son uh, suffered from TBI PTSD here in Indiana. Uh, and I also contacted uh, our Medal of Honor winner, Sammy Davis from Indiana. Everybody knows Sammy, but they may not know him by his name. Uh, Forrest Gump, oh, the movie, yeah. so Forrest Gump. Mm -hmm. For, Forrest Gump, as a soldier, is in fact Sammy Davis. I, hmm. when, when, when you saw uh, Tom Hanks as Forrest Gump get his Medal of Honor with, uh, at the presidency, they actually just cut and paste Tom Hanks' head on Sammy Davis's body to receive that. No way, that is cool. So it's very, very cool. Yeah. And Sammy and his wife, Dixie, are strong advocates for hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Mm. He has received it for his traumatic brain injuries from his time in Vietnam. Mm. Cool. And has yeah, it made so a difference in his brain health? And made it made a dramatic difference in his brain health. And, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, on several, several other health problems, that Sammy has, was experiencing mm -hmm. that the doctor said would never get better. Kidney uh -huh. function, uh, mm. his exposure to uh, the carcinogens, Agent Orange in particular, Orange pets, from Vietnam. Yeah. All those conditions have dramatically improved since Sammy started mm. doing HBOT. Wonderful. So how did it go when when you and Lisa and you know the family, how, when you uh, made your... Um, you know, with the uh, Indiana State Assembly, how did that work out when you presented well, your case? Yeah, we, you know, we, I got the bill authored, it got scheduled, it was at a hearing, and it was at a hearing uh, with uh, the, the, the chairman of the committee and other committee members, and we had several people, as I mentioned, who testified, and uh, I mean, there were tears everywhere with Lisa's and, and her husband's uh, testimony, and, and and that's easy to understand. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that Josh Spidell was a young version of Larry Bird. Mm. And everybody six, seven, knows, right? Six foot everybody seven. Everybody in the world knows Larry Bird. Yeah. And, and that, well, Josh was the next Larry mm. Bird in Indiana. That's great. So they awarded you the million dollars to help the veterans in Indiana so we, we, with the hyperbaric oxygen a, therapy? We did. We got a million dollars to uh, to test, do mm -hmm. a study 
to to uh, to to see if it worked. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of skeptical people, in spite of the fact that I uh, had yeah. so many anecdotal, so much so much evidence to present yeah. with people and mothers mm -hmm. uh, and people there to 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 use it. And we mm -hmm. wanted to, uh, so we we got that established. Uh, Purdue University was in charge of the study. Oh. Uh, we found hospitals and standalone clinics throughout Indiana to where mm. the patients would be able to get treated. So there are actually hospitals that are treating your veterans in their wound care hyperbaric departments in Indiana? We, yes, yes, there are. There are about 14 That's that great. have signed on mm. uh, in a couple standalone clinics uh, to, to actually treat the veterans and have it be paid for out of this million dollar fund. That is now, the funny. research is pretty pretty uh, finished. COVID really put a damper on it, uh, set us back for a couple of years. But the uh, the research is is wrapping up, and the 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 bottom line outcome is mm -hmm. what Purdue University says in writing is that it works. Of course, Excellent. we knew that. <laughs> yeah, we I can't wait that. for that to be published. We I have a whole can, body. Nobody, that's right. Yeah, research, but you know, you always want more and the most up to date. Now, um, let me just ask you on behalf of of How Foundation. Um, do you have um, any thoughts about what the unmet need is with veterans today and how you think that how as a veteran nonprofit community can help to tackle those unmet needs and keep getting veterans the care they need? Well, well, there, there are many, many things that, that uh, we've done and organizations like, like yours, Hillary, uh, just educating the medical world, educating mm. the public is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, push at the federal level mm. uh, for funding. Funding is also, is, is funding is yeah. the number one problem. Yeah. We're so appreciative of all the generous people that have donated uh, to help oh, people uh, like and, Josh, and I, the veterans, absolutely. our Cus student athletes. Yeah. Couldn't, yes. We and, need that. The, the concussion rate amongst children uh, there was a study done uh, a couple years ago by Blue Cross Blue Shield here in Indiana uh, that shows that the concussion rate's just going way up. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a, getting to be a steep yeah. curve. It's at least 20% in high schools, at least, and not all of them are reported. Yes. And, and that's and, a year. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've been working with a doctor, uh, uh, Daphne Denham, who mm -hmm. is kind of an expert in hyperbaric medicine as yeah. well. And she's done some tremendous right. research mm -hmm. showing that hyperbaric oxygen therapy for for kids is phenomenal. The sooner the kids get it, the faster they get over their concussion and back to their normal life. Thank you so much, Jim. We're going to get cut off in a minute. So I want to say thank you to you and Lisa. This has been extraordinary. I'm so excited about what we'll do in the future. And meanwhile, everybody should go to howfoundationsf.org if they want to learn more. We also appreciate our friends at Treat Now. Have a great rest of the day and God bless. Thank you. Thank you too, Hillary.